what do these fishermen, this container ship, and your summer holidays at the beach have in common? Well, they all belong to the blue economy. From fishing and tourism to renewable energy and biotechnology, millions of people rely on the sea to make a living. In 2021 alone, the ocean, or blue economy, generated 624 billion euros in Europe and provided jobs for 3.6 million people. But the term blue economy has come to mean more than just business. More and more often, it's about keeping our oceans alive while we use their resources. The whole idea with having a sustainable blue economy is that you keep an ocean with good health and by doing that you also have a more productive ocean. Sounds like a win-win, right? But the trick is finding the sweet spot between economic growth and environmental responsibility. So, how can we make the blue economy greener? Aquaculture is experimenting with algae-based fish feed. The shipping industry is testing hydrogen instead of fossil fuels and offshore wind farms are making clean energy. But even clean solutions come with their own set of challenges. Take offshore wind energy. Yes, it generates some of the cleanest electricity on the planet. But building these massive turbines, not so green. Environmental groups call out the disruptive noise generated during construction, which can harm marine life. The industry says it's working to fix that. The disturbances are, are mostly at the uh, the building stage, and in particular, piling uh, offshore foundations is a big disturbance. It's extremely noisy, but the industry has learned a lot, yeah, over the years in how to minimize and compensate those disturbances. So, for example, developers increasingly use bubble curtains when uh, using these big hammers basically to pile in the, the substations to absorb some of the sound waves uh, and minimize disturbance. And wind energy isn't the only sector walking a tightrope. Ocean tourism is adopting more sustainable practices, but some level of environmental damage remains inevitable. And hydrogen-powered ships could revolutionize transport but most hydrogen is still produced using fossil fuels like gas, coal and oil. Only about 1% comes from renewable energy. So, while technologies are rapidly improving when it comes to sustainability, it's not always possible to eliminate harmful consequences for the planet completely. But what matters more is reducing the environmental footprint as much as possible while planning ahead for what's coming. A potential attractive way is to factor in the knowledge we have about future climate change into today's decision making and management. Because if you invest in an infrastructure like a wind farm that should stay in the ocean for 40 years uh, and you place it where it's optimal today, that will not be the situation five years uh, from now or 10 years or 40 years from now. The clock is ticking. Right now, emissions from many blue economy sectors are still climbing. Maritime transport alone is responsible for 3 to 4% of EU CO2 emissions. And if nothing changes, those emissions could be at least 90% higher by 2050 than they were in 2008. Other industries are also exploring the deep sea for new resources. Deep sea mining is controversial. Some say it's crucial for producing green tech, while others warn it could destroy fragile ecosystems. In the end, the challenge of the blue economy is clear. How do we ensure that exploiting the ocean today doesn't come at too high a price in the future?